Hi there, Sandra here from the Schwoven's Nest. I'm glad you're stopping in today. I have gotten tons of questions about how I make my tiered trays from all of my viewers and subscribers, so I thought I would share that with you today. All three of these trays are made with a combination of dollar store products and thrift store finds. Enjoy! Today I'm using some springform pans to create an enamel look tiered tray. You'll probably recognize some of these pans. They're used to make cheesecake because the bottom pops right out of them. There's a latch that allows the bottom to just open up and then you've got your cheesecake all set to go. So what I decided to do was paint these white. So I have this larger one at the bottom. I had used this for a different project earlier. That's why it has those little bead feet on the bottom of it. I'm using my Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint and I'm gonna give everything two good coats. I started drilling a hole on the bottom but then realized I needed a larger drill bit. So I'm using this half inch spade drill bit to go through this bottom wood piece that was attached from a previous project. It's just going to give the tray a little bit more sturdiness. If you've ever experienced working with springform trays, that bottom is a little flexible. So I wanted it to be nice and sturdy for this tray. I'm going to be using a little dowel, but which is actually the handle of a foam paintbrush. I always keep them. If the foam brush is no good, you can just unscrew it and throw the brush away and you've still got a nice little piece of dowel. This is going to help support the centerpiece that is going to be the stand part of the tray. Using my hacksaw and miter box, I'm just going to cut the dowel piece in half. Can you all guess what this is from? It's actually a rolling pin. I took off the handles. This was something that is available at my local Dollarama store for $4. I had previously stained it, but now I'm just going to paint it black. The paint I'm using is just black acrylic paint and some baby powder, which makes it into a chalky finish. I'm also going to paint one end of one of the half pieces of dowel because that part is going to be sticking up a little bit on the top part of the tray. These pans are perfect for creating an enamel look because they have a rim on them already. I'm going to use the same paint and a makeup sponge to apply the black all around the rim of each of the pans. I like using a makeup sponge because you have a lot more control than with a paintbrush and you never get any drips. I'm also going to paint the hinges and all of that hardware black. Since this bottom pan already had some feet on the bottom, I didn't need to add anything, but I am just going to paint them black so they match in with the theme of this tray. Now comes the fun part. I'm going to assemble this and cross my fingers that it turns out the way I have it pictured in my head. I think it will. I'm tapping these dowels into the ends of the rolling pin and that's gonna give me the sturdiness that I need for the tray. I'm using no more nails to attach the two of these together. I'm using my finger to just put a generous amount of the no nails adhesive on the dowel and the rolling pin. Then I'll use some hot glue around the outside edge to just give it that extra hold while the no nails glue is drying. I did the same technique for the bottom tray and now I'll just slide the top tray right on top of that dowel and hold it in place until the hot glue dries. Here's where you can see the little piece of dowel sticking up on the top tray and that's why I painted it black. For some added security, I'm going to place a generous amount of hot glue around the dowel that's sticking out on the bottom pan. I am really happy with how my tray turned out. It is exactly how I envisioned it in my head. I hope you like it too. This next project I think will appeal to a lot of you out there. I'm going to show you how I take these two plates and make them into a tiered tray for less than $5. I found this wood piece, they came two in a pack for $2, so it was a buck. And I took it and cut it into two separate pieces. 
I'm taking this Americana gel stain in walnut and I'm going to just use the makeup sponge and wipe it on all of the wood pieces, making sure that I get into all the little cracks and crevices. It's going to blend in really well with these plates that I think are kind of a modern farmhouse kind of look. And I just bought the one set, but I have a feeling I'm gonna be going back and getting another set of these plates because this is gonna turn out really sweet. The easiest way for me to find the center is to take my wood piece, place it on the plate where I think the center is just by looking at it. And then I'm going to take my ruler and measure all the way around to make sure that I have it in the center and it ends up being about four and a quarter inches all the way around. Then I'm going to take my pencil and simply just draw a circle around the wood piece. So once I have the glue on, I can easily find the center. I'm using my favorite Weld Bond permanent glue. You can see the bottle laying down there. I'm almost out of that one. And I'm going to just put a nice thick layer on and then just place it right onto the circle and let it set. I did the same thing for the top plate and now I'm just filling in the little markings that don't have any stain in them with a little brush. After about 20 minutes, the Weld Bond glue is pretty firm so I'm able to go ahead and add glue to the bottom wood piece and then just set the smaller plate on top, eyeball it to make sure it's in the right spot and then let it set up and harden. I'm starting off with the top tray. This is just a little wood tray that I picked up at my local dollar store. It had the word gather and some engravings in it, which I didn't like. You can see I did try to fill it with some spackle. That didn't work. So I'm just gonna take these stakes that were also a local dollar store purchase. They're, I think, basswood or balsa wood. Anyhow, they're really easy to cut. So I'm just gonna measure them down and cut them to fit the tray. Then I'll just attach them with some hot glue. I'm starting off the paint technique for this tray with a foundation of white. So I'm using Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint. This is my first time using Folk Art Chalk Paint. It's super thick. So if you wanna make it go a little bit farther, you could probably thin it down with just a touch of water. I'm not gonna need that because I'm just gonna be doing my dry brush technique. And what I'm going to do is layer a bunch of different colors to achieve the look that I want. The dry brush technique that I like to use is just using a really old chippy brush that's seen better days, the rougher the better. And what I do is dip my brush in the paint just a little bit, dab it off, and I usually just use the bowl to do that. And then I'm gonna brush across it in the direction of the wood grain. Now you can do it lightly, you can do it heavily. For this project, I am going to be doing it quite heavy, but you'll still be able to see the texture. So unfortunately, the next couple of steps, I did miss recording because I have a brand new camera and I was hitting the button, but not realizing that I was turning the button off instead of turning the button on. So anyway, what I did here was I used some black for dry brushing and then I used some brown to dry brush it a little bit darker. And then I found that it was too dark. So I liked how this looked, but I was looking for more of a lighter gray. So now I'm taking just a light gray color that I have and I'm just doing the same thing, dry brushing, just to give it a little bit of a lighter look. This is the bottom tray. It's also a dollar store find, and it's a little bit of a different shape, but it still has the same bones. And what I needed to do is just sand down these words and what I had done in a previous project that I no longer wanted, so I'm reusing what I have. I'll also give this a good coat of white paint and then I'll start with my colors dry brushing. Grab these two candlesticks from a thrift store and they've been in my stash for a while waiting for this tiered project to get itself together and I'm finally doing it thanks to Nicole for her get it done challenge. And I just cut off the base of one of them because I won't need that. The next thing I'm gonna do is just clean them up and then dry brush some paint on them. Now 
now comes the best part, assembling my tiered tray. I want this to be permanent, so I'm using my weld bond glue and I'm going to just put a little bit of glue on the bottom. This dries fairly quickly. It's not like E6000 where you need to let it cure for a while. This is pretty much good to go within about 15 or 20 minutes. So I really like how this glue works. It's my favorite one that I use. So I'm just pressing it down into the center and then I'm gonna go ahead and add the next layer. I have I hope you enjoyed my three tiered tray DIYs and learned how to create one for yourself. It's really not that hard. Give it a try. If you like what you saw, I'd love for you to stick around. Hit that subscribe button. Those two black arrows will show you exactly where to click. Bye for now.